I'm Thalia Eisen at the VetArt School of Ceramics and Glass in beautiful Vista, California. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about polymer clay and introducing you to how to use it. Polymer clay is a material that I've used for many years. In fact, I have with me today a sculpture that I made when I was in the fifth grade. We were asked to read The Old Man in the Sea and it went a bit over my head, although in later years I went back and reread it and I thought it was a wonderful book. Um, Though the book is not recommended for children, the material definitely is. And you can see that it's a durable material because I just turned 40 and this piece still exists. My mom had it and she brought it to me when she heard that I was making these videos. Um, polymer clay is a very forgiving material that lends itself very well to making small sculptures. And here you can see that I effectively depicted the old man and the marlin fish, as well as the boat. Uh, and the water. So this material has lasted in its original form for about 30 years. And um, it's great for kids because it's non-toxic and it comes in a lot of bright colors. And it's also good for anybody who's making artwork at home because it cooks in your home oven at 270 degrees. That's an important piece of information right there. You're going to be cooking all of the projects for these videos at that temperature, 270 degrees. And it's a great temperature to use because it is far below the point at which anything is going to catch on fire, which is 451 degrees. You can put all sorts of different materials in with your polymer clay, which doesn't shrink or expand, and end up with a multimedia project that you've baked in your own oven that's fully cured. By contrast, ceramic clay cooks at temperatures like 1600 degrees, 2350, and so on. It's generally going to be within a few hundred degrees of 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not a temperature that anyone's home oven ever reaches, so you have to have a ceramic studio. However, with colorful polymer clays, you can finish your entire project in the comfort of your own home. Most clays are somewhat brittle in a way that polymer clay is not. Polymer clay can be warped to a better consistency if it's too dry, and it can be placed between pieces of paper if it's too wet. Many of the same skills that you use for ceramic clay will be useful with polymer clay. However, some of the techniques that you need to use with, with regular clay to make it stick together, for example, are not necessary with polymer clay. Scoring and slipping is not a part of polymer clay. Polymer clay can easily be braided and it can be stretched without cracking. This makes it an ideal medium for making a maquette because you can work out the various different components of some sort of a large sculpture you want to make with ceramic clay uh, in the polymer clay and create a small model of it without having to worry about attaching the parts successfully or firing the piece. And none of the pitfalls of firing will apply to this type of clay. Most of the materials that you would consider using in conjunction with polymer clay such as jewelry items, other types of plastic, paper, and wood, and metal, will be just fine at the 270 degrees. Test out these materials before you put them into your masterpiece. Now, you may have noticed my pterodactyl. He has googly eyes. These googly eyes were cooked inside of the piece. This makes polymer clay a lot more versatile in some ways than ceramic clay. Above 451 degrees, many things will burn away, but at 270 degrees, many things will survive. One thing I want you to note is that you can actually get a spiral design from a completely disorganized lump of clay. This is some clay that uh, I took off the edges of pieces that I was making and you can see how it starts to take on an organized pattern just because after I start rolling it, uh, I'm rolling it in a single direction. So you can actually turn something that looks like a disorganized mass of clay into a very organized looking barber pole thing. The clear rolling pin is pretty cool. Then you can flatten that out and um, add order to the chaos. 
This is a cane. It's basically um, composed of images that are going to be stretched up through the clay so that you can cut multiple copies of it. And you can see how I'm adding uh, an outer layer to this design. Then you can copy it a lot of different times, so you could make beads out of it. This is something to experiment with as you're rolling coils. And here's another cane. The cane can be a square or a circle or an oval. Here I am rolling the sides of the cane. I love that silver clay. It's too much fun to work with. When I cut a piece in half in order to double a pattern, I always measure it out just a little bit beforehand and put a little mark on there because sometimes it makes it easier to see where the midpoint is and I can adjust where I actually put the cut after the fact. So you can see what I just did there. I suggest it. You can also see how the cane works out, how um, these checkerboard patterns I made are running up through the piece and you can cut them open. The fact that polymer clay has so many different colors really adds another dimension to it that ceramic clay doesn't have. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about my next video. In my next video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of making a monster, or possibly a real animal, depending on how creative you want to be or how realistic you want your piece to be. I recommend making something that is not entirely a real animal. My pterodactyl is not anatomically correct in any way. Start to think about what kind of a creature you wanna make. It could be a chimera, which is a, a combination of multiple animals, or it could be something that you conceived entirely from your imagination. It could have four eyes and three horns and a big squiggly tail, or it could have um, bat wings combined with a uh, giraffe. You know, it could be any number of different things you want it to be. It doesn't even have to be based on animals. It could be a computer with legs, or uh, it, it could be a book that's actually a worm. The, uh, the possibilities are truly endless for this project, but whatever the case may be, I want you to think about what you're going to make from the inside out. Now, I don't wanna scare you, but there might be bones in there. And whatever kind of understructure is inside your monster, we're gonna try and make that first. So if you can, gather some pictures that will help you to make whatever shapes are inside of your creature. All right, think about your monster. That's all for today.